And welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio, your home for anarchism and action. I'm your host, Shane. This podcast, everything found on the website, unless otherwise noted, is covered by a BIPCOT, no government license. This allows reuse and modification to anyone, except for governments and the bludgies thereof. You can learn more at BIPCOT.org. So today I'm joined once again by Aaron Thompson, who is actually wearing a Bipcot sticker on his forehead right now, as you can see, uh, host of the Liberty Lampoon podcast. Uh, so if you aren't a listener to his show already, uh, you need to check it out. Uh, him and Michael, or he and Michael, however you put that grammatically, uh, have me laughing my ass off every single week, every time I listen. But uh, anyways, man, uh, welcome back to Liberty Under Attack. Uh, how are things going? Oh man, it's going good. Finally got a freaking property of my own. Got my own house now, you know, so I can protect my fucking castle. I feel like, uh, you know, everything's going very well right now in my life. <laughs> right. I'm right. actually, I'm, uh, you know, the the show is getting funnier, you know, in my opinion, uh, because I laugh more every episode, uh, you know. Uh, and when you guys have just, fun, the listeners have fun. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I actually like started writing uh, like topical news jokes for the show. We do like a segment where I actually tell fucking jokes, and some of them work, and some of them don't, you know. <laughs> and uh, but I I found out that I can oh, and I'm sorry to any of your listeners who might be offended by this, but I found out that I can always, if I can't come up with a good joke about something, you know, modern and in the news, uh, I can always come up with a good joke about uh, priests fucking kids or something, you know. <laughs> right, Seriously. Right. There are so there is so much good material there, but I'm thinking about moving on to Scientology next because it's starting to get played out. You know, you can only tell so many Catholic jokes. Right, right, right. <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so I, I get yeah, it's been yeah. So I'm trying to think. The, the last time we had you on was uh, for that deep state episode when we kind of talked about that. Uh, and I still yeah. have as little understand. I guess I, I have an understanding, but uh, I mean, it, it's it's like most things in the news cycle. Uh, you know, no one really knows what the hell they're talking about. Uh, so so yeah, I guess I have uh, you know as much understanding as everyone else, but uh, but uh, but yeah, gen generally speaking, not so much. So that was the last time we had you on, and uh, you know, I haven't really followed up on any of <laughs> any of that uh, since then. But uh, but uh, I guess for for you, since you kind of follow the news, I mean, what's the deep state up to now? Hey, listen. Uh the deep state I've figured out is I think that the, the idea of the deep state is number one, we already said it's like um, almost undefinable, right? But number two, it is a way for people to dismiss anything that you're talking about. And uh, I actually literally just read an article like yesterday that was talking about anybody who talks about the deep state, uh, it works for the Russians or or, you, you know, like there's this whole uh, paranoia since we last talked about uh, Russian meddling with our lives here in the United States or whatever, which may or may not be true. But I don't really give a, <laughs> don't give a fuck. No, know? I, I don't. But, I don't either. You know, the, the, you know, the, the, the United States government's already meddling enough. Uh, and also there's yeah, the yeah. local governments. I mean, I mean, Russia. I mean, hell, they're a lot further away. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean. Putin never did anything to me. Doesn't just doesn't he just ride uh, ride horses uh, with his shirt off? Is that what he does? It does over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there should be a lot more T-shirts with him like naked on a fucking horse because I feel like those would sell like those fucking Three Wolf Moon shirts. Have you seen those? Wait, do I need to censor myself? I'm no, sorry. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you're okay. good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I, I I think I know what you're I think I know what you're talking about, but I'm not I'm not positive. Yeah, they sell them at like Walmart, but they all, if you go literally go look at Amazon and type in Three Wolf Moon and read all the fucking reviews, it is a phenomenon. It is insanity. It's like people saying that this shirt got me laid. <laughs> this shirt, $7 million fell out of the sky and landed my, in my lap and shit. I just think that Vladimir Putin has that sort of look where, uh, I don't know, he looks like a badass, right? Uh, and I mean, he's a government thug and, you know, whatever. But as far as the deep state's concerned, all I'm saying is that if if the deep state is something that you care about uh, a lot and you're using that to sort of push your narrative or whatever, which there are. I've seen anarchists who talk about the deep state pretty regularly. Um, if you if you use that as your main narrative, you're explaining something that is uh, you're using that to sort of push the narrative that nobody understands because until somebody can tell me what the fucking deep state is 
I mean, as far as I can tell, all it is is a way for people to dismiss you. You know right, what I mean? Right, and, and I think it's been a very, very useful tool to to the state. You know, the whether whether the the deep state or the shallow state, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, and so it's, it's also very good for them because it's. Uh, I mean, they can they can push it in any direction they possibly want to, whether it's Russia, whether it's uh, you know the CIA or the FBI or whatever. But but I, I guess the like yeah, last time we talked about it, as far as I understand it, from people, I guess from the couple people who have been following it for like five plus years now. Uh, as far as I understand it, it's simply the unelected, uh, you know, the unelected, you know, bureaucrats, the, the ones that nobody knows about is the deep state. Um, so like right. all of the, 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 all of the, uh, uh, the administrative agencies, um, that, uh, you know, were responding to existence and the, admi the, uh, uh, the administrative procedures act or something for 1946. Uh, so that's, that's how I understand it. But yeah, it's, it's always funny. Uh, it's, it's almost kind of a joke now to me. Uh, although yeah. most things in the state of survival society are, are a complete joke are a complete joke but uh yeah. anything else on that well um i do want to quickly mention that uh you know as far as those unelected bureaucracies are concerned they do pose a fucking threat to you you know what i mean they're, they're the they're the ones i mean uh so so people are so worried about you know the president and and uh you know uh, and congress and all of that uh the the administrative agencies are the ones that uh, that you have the most, you know, interaction with uh, in, in your in your day to day lives. They're the ones that. Right. Uh, I mean, they 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 do pr they do like anything. If you like national security agency, um, the you know the um, environmental protection agency, uh, pretty much anything that ends in an A agency. Uh, you're talking about an, an administrative agency. And if you look on, uh, if you just look up all of the different agencies that there are, these are the ones that have the, um, they have the all of the power. They they. Um, they, they can they literally write, they write make their laws, basically they, they, laws. They write yeah. their laws. They enforce their laws, and they interpret their laws. They do everything. Um, they're the it's a fourth branch of government, uh, essentially. And so that that's what I see the deep state as. Uh, and it's worth that's that's worth it. I mean, I just don't understand why it needs to be called the deep state, though. You know what I mean? You could just say all the fucking bureaucracies, and that right. makes more sense it's, to me. Exactly. You know what I mean? Everyone knows what you're talking about when you say the, the like the administrative agencies or you know the, the bureaucracies. Yeah. But when you when you you know I guess conjure up this this term the deep state and obfuscate into into you know goddamn hell. Uh, I mean it's boogeyman. It's, yeah, it's, you're creating a like a, a boogeyman that that people can choose not to believe in. Whereas if you have if you're just saying fucking agencies, you know uh, you're talking about people who can basically make laws you're talking about concrete things Think, yeah. yeah exactly you, you can point you. to the nsa and say okay that's the national security agency but when you say uh we'll point to the deep state uh, okay uh, <laughs> yeah Can't, I, 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 i've never seen it nope 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 uh, no, cer certainly haven't certainly haven't so so yeah that was the the last discussion we had which uh, which was uh, which was a good time and uh, I, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I, I, before we before we get into, I guess, the, the rest of this discussion, uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit, of, a little bit about you and uh, and uh, your podcast? Oh, uh, okay. So Liberty Lampoon, <clears throat> I I do a show called Liberty Lampoon, which you can find at libertylampoon.com. And uh, essentially, the idea was at the time it was like the 2016 election, and uh, you know, I noticed that these nuts was catching on i noticed that uh you know all these uh horse shit Cthulhu. uh <laughs> yeah yeah Cthul yeah uh uh nobody 2016 was catching on everybody knew that everything was awful you know what i mean all these two choices were awful so i was like let's fucking play off that but go after every single person and every single agency and every single fucking uh you know uh news story that was horse shit and uh, and so we made Liberty Lampoon. Literally, the tagline is uh, lambasting politicians, public figures, policies, and print, all from a freedom-minded perspective. We've changed it. It used to be all from a liberty-minded perspective, but we've changed it to freedom-minded perspective because too often nowadays, I get the idea that liberty is being associated with not freedom. So right, right, and, and to, to add on to that, uh, as 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 Rayo talked about, liberty is general exemption from coercion. So these are your legal interstices, your legal loopholes. These are the things that you you uh, you get your you get your Floyd card here in Illinois so that you can uh, have a firearm. So it's just a way to you're you're granted that that privilege by the state. So I think that that was a wise decision on your part. 
Yeah. Although the although yeah. the show is called Liberty Under Attack, which I've I've <laughs> which yeah that oh I just I just kind of you know tied that together. But no, I I I I thought about that probably back in 2015, but at that point I had already done like six months of the show, and I wasn't gonna rebrand everything. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, go ahead. Well, um, Liberty Under Attack and Liberty Lampoon, those are still catchy titles, and they appeal to a wide audience. You know what I mean? It. I'm sorry, but. We have to sort of, if we're going to be market anarchists, we have to have some sort of fucking market idea, you know what I mean? And not just be like, let me just rebrand everything after I've gotten all these followers, you know? Let's not fucking do that. Anyways. Right. Um, so now uh, we've sort of strayed away, I would say we've strayed away from uh, strictly talking about, you know, uh, this politician, this politician, you know. Well, it's it's more it's gotten more into comedy. I want to say it's gotten it's gone further into the comedy rabbit hole. We sort of catch up with each other, um, and I would say that we spend more time talking about the um, the state as it affects us locally. And this is actually something that I've sort of wanted to speak with you about, uh, which is, you know, uh, as far as anarchy or liberty or whatever is concerned, uh, Vanu, you name it. Um, we talk a lot about individuals. You know what I mean? We talk a lot about individual freedom. Right. S something that we've been struggling with on this show, Liberty Lampoon, is uh, is the idea of what is it gonna? What can we do as far as uh, localities? And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I live in a neighborhood right now, and we have an HOA, and our HOA. Uh, you know, some some anarchists talk shit about HOAs. Um, mine doesn't really fucking do anything. Basically, the only reason that it exists is they collect a due and they build a fucking playground, right? Right. And and all the neighbor kids use that. So, uh, which is volunt. It, you know, I decided to live in this fucking neighborhood. And the stipulations of the contract are laid out before you before you decide to move. So yeah, that's a, yeah, right. Completely above, right. completely above board. I, I knew what it was. So, as what I'm what I'm sort of saying is like I don't understand. Uh, well, I do sort of, but as far as Vanu is concerned or uh, freedom is concerned, what can we do uh, to convince our fucking neighbors? You know uh, that that uh, I'm talking about in the event of uh, more freedom, right? What do we do to convince our uh, neighbors not to fucking band together to fucking burn our goddamn houses down you know like we talk about shit like that like s sort of um sort of the questions of my community or my city you know and looking at those through the lens of an anarchist basically mm -hmm. and saying there are pragmatic things that we can do but those things don't get me very much fucking freedom you know what i mean right. like i i don't want to go sit in the local s city council meeting and discuss shit about uh, what they're going to do with bond money. You know what I mean? Uh, I, they took that fucking bond money. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm not going to go right. to you, the you fucking don't, you city don't You don't want to you know, have, have an influence on how that stolen money is allocated. No, I, I, I understand that, yeah. Exactly. So, um, essentially the point is that we talk about shit like that a lot. We talk about our local community. We talk about our state. Our state's in this huge budget hole right now. And it's so great to watch them. Uh, there's literally Democrats and Republicans not voting for tax increases, uh, which I think is fucking sort of cool, you know. Uh, but they're in this budget hole because they didn't budget correctly. Uh, they well, put of, these. Of course not. Why, why? 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 They don't need. They don't need to budget money. It's not theirs to begin with, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But it's easy for us to point it at this. And, you know, a lot of the friends that I have, they'll, they'll say shit like, this is why we need more Democrats in office. It's like, dude, th this problem originated from fucking Democrats. Then Republicans got a hold of it, and it didn't get any fucking better, bro. Right. And so, so it's easy for us to sort of tell uh, people locally, uh, you know, that the state is clearly <laughs> this form of secession wouldn't work any better. You know, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, if Oklahoma were to secede from the United States, things wouldn't change. 
we would still be in a situation where we're being oppressed by fucking bludgies. You know what I mean? Right, right. And and, and this is, and I'm just going to say this just because it goes along with this guy. I don't actually agree with it, but um, I, I, I can't remember who said it, but uh, I think it was one of the so-called founding fathers. Um, you know, the government closest to you is most important or something along those lines, paraphrasing. Um, so, I mean, if... if and and this 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 would have been my approach a couple of years ago. Uh, so maybe this is where you guys are. At. I'm not I'm not really sure. But um, but yeah, actually back before I even started the podcast, because I I, vote, I voted one time in 20 in the 2012 election, canceled my voter registration in 2015, and in 2014 I was you know telling people like you know if you're going to be involved in politics, do it at the local level. Um, because that's that's what you have the most influence over, but you still don't have any influence over it. Um, and, no, and, they're, and they're and they're, and they're the saying. government, and they're the government, like they're the ones. I mean, how often does the federal government intervene in your life? Um, like maybe you know, come tax, you know, April fifteenth, maybe you know, with your with your tax return, um, or your theft return. Um, I mean, I can't think of very many instances where the federal government's actually involved in my life, right? Um, right. Sure, they have laws on the books, but I mean, do, do I don't ever you know have any interaction with federal bludgies, thankfully. Um, but as far as you know, local, you know, local bludgies, uh, local bureaucracies, etc. Uh, you know, that, those and those people have a lot more influence on my life than than some dipshit sitting in the Oval Office, right? Um, right. So I, I understand I understand that approach. Um, but obviously, I, I guess, I, and, and we can, we can get back to this and kind of and, and flesh it out and unpack it a little bit. But uh, but obviously, uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm not big into. Uh, I, I mean. And this is my sound hypocritical considering I do two podcasts, which uh, two podcasts which do serve this purpose as well. I guess it's a, it serves both purposes. But um, I'm not much into educating status. Uh, I'm not much into trying to you know change their minds. Um, I don't know. I, I, I did that for 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 some time, and uh, it was you know largely ineffective, and it was just uh, stra- it was stressful. It was frustrating, and uh, it was a lot of it was just a, a complete waste of time. Um, and I may have a great discussion with somebody, and they might say, "Okay, you know, I'm I'm kind of coming around on this." And then one week later, they'd post some fascist or socialist nonsense. It's like, didn't we, <laughs> didn't we just talk about this last week, dude? Um, so I, I guess I I, I, I I understand where you're, where I guess where you're coming from in that perspective. But um, I mean, I, I don't. I'm my goal isn't to really my my main goal isn't to educate people. Or else my goal at all. I mean, that might be a a byproduct of of the work that I do. But my goal is to to reach those that have already. You know that have already come to the the, the positions that we have, uh, me and you. Um, that's that's kind of my, my approach to it. But but we can certainly yeah we can. Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, what, what else you got? Uh, well, no, no, no. I was gonna say as far as all that's concerned, um, I wouldn't even really say that we actually try to educate people. I would say more so that we shit all over everything that the local governments do until. Uh, you know, maybe somebody comes along and says, yeah, you know, they're really right about this. You know what I mean? We don't necessarily have the intention that we're going to change anybody's fucking minds. You know what I mean? It's more so that, uh, uh, that, that, um, we think it's all hogwash and horse shit and, uh, and we're telling everybody that it's all hogwash and all horse shit and people generally will agree with us to a point. You know what I mean? Like, we have a pretty wide audience of people that don't think like us. They're not anarchists, you know what I mean? But they can listen because they know that what we're saying is accurate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. I can talk shit about the the state of Oklahoma government all day long. Sorry, I just heard it. Um, <laughs> my son's peeking in the, the door. Um, <laughs> so I'm cleaning up my language real quick. I can... Uh, talk crap about the state of Oklahoma government all day long, and everybody will agree with everything that I'm that I'm saying. Uh, and but then they won't change their mind at all. So you're right. There is really no point in me trying to educate status or whatever. Uh, but there's also no point in, uh, in my opinion, there's no point in me uh, in, in me trying to. Uh, do you see a child? I, I, I saw a little head for about a half a second. <laughs> uh, there's also no point in me um, in me pretending like the problems don't exist. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. No, I, 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 I'm certainly there with you, and 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 
<clears throat> you know, I, I and I, I hear I hear this from from folks a lot, but uh, it's it's very dangerous to act like the state doesn't exist. Like you can say like, well, the state is just this, uh, you know, this uh, the, this the state is this fiction. Only individuals exist, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's it's very dangerous to, uh, I guess, kind of just just portray that entire that entire I guess uh, assembly as 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 fiction or imaginary because the the violence is very real, the danger is very real. Uh, so so I I I, I understand that. Um, and as far as, yeah, the, the, it's yeah, understanding the problems, or I guess leaving out that the problems don't exist or something along, the, or, uh, something, so along those lines. Uh, I think the anarchist communities and, and the alternative media, I think that's the, they, they, they certainly don't, uh, you know, in, in general. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, um, a lot of shows that, that pretty much only cover the problems. And uh, there's, right. a, there's, a, there's a place for that, sure. Um, but at, at the same time, I mean, uh, you know, what's, what's, what, you know, what's, uh, what's, what are these problems What's without the, solutions? Right. And that brings us to what I really wanted to talk about, which was um, the fact that today we're recording this on Armistice Day. So I don't know what day it's going to release, but uh, this is Armistice Day. It's literally, uh, well, it's almost noon now, but we basically started around 11, 11, you know, 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that. I sort of told you before we started that um, I think that being anti-war is important simply because we can say this is what the state does. I mean, I don't even know how many millions of people are fucking dead because of the state's wars, but it's, it's a impo lot. It's impossible to keep track of it. Yeah. And, and the, es the estimates from organizations – uh, from like you know organizations at antiwar.com sites, I mean they they're very conservative on, on their numbers. So exactly the the number it's it's impossible to know. It's it's, it's extremely exorbitant and and the it's yeah it's 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 awful to think about. It really is. Yeah, but uh, I sort of started talking to you about I don't know what value discussing this has as far as me getting more freedom. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I know what your show is all about. Your show is about the solutions. I mean, you've got what over uh, how many hours of freaking solutions saved up? Dude, uh, I over over thirty hours in the direct action series alone. So I have no idea. I it's no it's idea. a lot. It's a lot, right? And uh, and so those are the things that matter because those are the things that you have power over. You know what I mean? Um, you you can change. Uh, you you can basically make yourself somewhat, uh, if not all the way, uh, invulnerable to coercion. Now, everybody is going to be affected by coercion uh, a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, But you can avoid it where you can, right? Right. Uh, do you have something to say as far as coer being invulnerable to coercion? Isn't that like what your goal is? Um, so, so, so yeah, becoming as invulnerable to coercion as, as humanly possible. Um, now, and, and that's, that's obviously something that I guess the, the term Vani, that's, that's what, uh, that's what Rayo came up with. Um, right. so, so, so yeah, like freedom, absence of coercion and, uh, and Vani and vulnerability to coercion, both of those end goal things, I guess you could say, um, I mean, th those are utopias. There's, there's never going to be, um, a world where coercion is, absent you know there, where there's no coercion even right. you know and e even in uh, you know even if you know the majority of people adopt uh you know say voluntarist principles or something there's still going to be those that violate person and property so there's there will still be coercion uh now with with vanu and vulnerability to coercion yeah it's impossible to become as it's, it's impossible to become invulnerable to coercion completely uh it really is but you can you can reduce the risk uh, quite a bit uh you right. know, through through various strategies and methods um i wanted to before i forget <clears throat> you mentioned that um, you know, being anti-war doesn't, uh, you know, actually increase your freedom. Um, but I, th no. I think one, one, one very good benefit, and I wish people would, I wish this would be more of a focus rather than just, you know, endlessly filming cops beating people or bludgies beating <laughs> people. Um, I wish because one, because one, one reason I think that um, a lot of people blindly support war is because they don't actually see it that much, right? They don't right. show these really br brutal, horrific scenes on, on faux news or the Communist News Network. They just don't do that. Um, I think if, if people were to actually see the violence, um, they know the violence is there, but it's, 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 it's very abstract. It's way over the pond. It has nothing to do with their lives here, or so they think. Um, I, th I, I think there, there could be a benefit um, in 
you know, if there were, I guess, anarchist, uh, you know, war reporters, and, uh, you know, they were able to, you know, get all, get a bunch of the stuff on camera, it'd be, it'd be horrifying and terrible, sure, but for, for the, for the folks in the state of survival society who actually see the violence, you, do you see these 500,000 dead children, you know, due to Western sanctions by, you know, Madeleine Albright, uh, uh, Madeleine Albright back in, you know, mid, mid, uh, mid, uh, 1990s or thereabouts? Who said it was fucking worth it, by yep. the way? Yep. Um, so, so did you like? Have you seen? Have you? I guess. Um, do you see all those dead children that uh, you know were affected by by these policies? Um, do you see you know this entire city bombed to oblivion time and time again, and and all of the all of the starving you know dead children there? Um, I mean, uh, I, I don't think a lot of people really think about that. Uh, no. I really don't. So I think there could be a benefit as far as, I guess, kind of the shock factor, um, or I guess the hor the horrific factor. Um, I think there could be a benefit there, but as far as yeah, you know, me personally being anti-war, no, it doesn't. It doesn't bring me more more freedom. No. It's just more of a philosophical thing. Yeah, and um, that that's what uh, that's what I was sort of getting at is that like sometimes I wonder if it's even worth it to even talk about. Uh, and then then I sort of think that the benefit is exactly what you just said, uh, is exposing uh, the the damage that the state does regularly. And I mean, in uh, in the iteration of the state that we have here in the United States, uh, it's been what? There's been what? Twenty years of peace in the United States. You know what I, I mean? Don't, like, I don't think I don't think there ever has been because I I think there was um, I saw some I didn't follow it up on it, but like there there was there were examples. Um, but America has literally been in war for the entire 250 plus years or however long it's been. Um, you know, since since the I guess the, the creation of the so-called country. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, there has never been uh, there has never been peace. Sure, you know, here in the in the in the uh, the, the tax farms, uh, you know, here in America, maybe maybe there was uh, some some times of peace when when government, uh, you know, when maybe when it was uh, the uh, <clears throat> oh, and no, I can't think of what they're called. Uh, not the <laughs> the, uh, the the ones that preceded the Constitution. Um, the, the 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 I guess the document. Um, uh, the Articles of Confederation, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, but um, like maybe then when the when governments <laughs> are really small, um, you know, they, you know, maybe maybe things were kind of peaceful here here in America, but uh, you know, war, I mean, that's always been kind of a, kind of a thing. I so, so I don't think there's been peace. Who says who? Uh, somebody says that war is the health of the state, right, or something like that. I think and, that was Yeah. So uh, so wars will continue forever you know you know what i mean like it, it's gotta it's gotta continue and um so i just you know i love telling people that i'm anti-war uh because it's it's such an awkward position especially to put like a veteran in because uh you know i've always even my my father um i come from like a long line of veterans you know same here and both my grandpas yeah and uh and I remember, yeah, <laughs> going to my grandpa. Uh, I remember speaking to my grandpa who was he was on a hospital ship during the Korean War. And I don't know if you know this, but that war was ridiculously brutal. People don't realize how bad that war was. And uh, and being on a hospital ship, all he's seeing is people that he basically knows or has a kinship with, his neighbors who are blown to bits and he's wondering why and i remember he talked to me se on several occasions about wondering if it was worth it right that's him that's a veteran right right my and, father and I, guess, I guess just just toss one thing in here in here too my grandpa um had something similar he um he was it, I, I he was uh he was a marine, and he didn't really he didn't really see a lot of battle. He pretty much came in after things were were kind of you know settled, and they you know I guess they were they were somewhere. I don't know all the details. I I was my my grandparents both died but like you know pretty early on, and and but and I guess my my grandpa the one I'm talking about now he died a few years back, but he had Alzheimer's for the past five years, so I couldn't really have any of these conversations with him. But apparently uh, you know they were you know on on shore, and uh, his his uh, his I guess his uh, his his buddy you know took off his helmet. And, uh, you know, apparently he got shot and, and died right there. Um, yeah. So, like, a lot of the – and he, that, that you know, he, he had a really – I remember when we lived back in Iowa, and I would have been maybe 
don't know, maybe like 13 or 14 at this time. My grand, my, my dad recorded a bunch of conversations with him, and my grandpa was in there crying when he was talking about it. Like, these are very traumatic things that happen. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. No, no, uh, I was going to say my grandpa My grandpa ended up having Alzheimer's, too. Um, he lived he lived a pretty long time, but um, he, he, he uh, yeah, he had Alzheimer's, too. And, uh, and so, anyways, so there's him questioning, you know, what, if it was worth it. I mean, what was in Korea other than allies, you know? Uh, and then, then my, even my father, uh, he was in Desert Storm. And, uh, you know, he's got PTSD out the wazoo now. Um, and he even talks to me about, whether or not it was worth it, you know, like he doesn't know. And so whenever I speak to him about stuff like this and I say, my number one thing is that I am anti-war. Sure. You know, he's, he's a, uh, he's Islamic phobic, you know, because it's hard for you yeah. to go someplace and get, have your friends get murdered by uh, a certain group of people and then come back and then just be cool with it. You know, even though, I mean, they were, the, they're the ones who were there, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it, but I talk to him about this stuff all the time, and I tell him that the number one thing that I am is anti-war. And he's like, why are you anti-war? And usually I'll take it to sort of an emotional level. Look at you. You know, <laughs> like, look at you right now. You are so fucked up, and you admit that you're fucked up because of what this war did to you. And what did we get from it? What did we get? We didn't get anything. Saddam Hussein uh, wasn't taken out of power. And even if he was, what the fuck does that have to do with us? You know what I mean? And right, right. it's – it's you, the reason I'm saying I love being anti-war is because you put this – I'm sort of planting a seed of like, wait, um, why do we support these wars? You know what I mean? Why are we supporting this war? Uh and, you know, supporting the war isn't what I, you know, I don't want people not to support the war necessarily. I want people to realize that the idea behind this war came from old men who, uh, who want to continue this stranglehold that the state has on its people. It wants people to be slaves, to fucking go and die, commit the blood sacrifice for the state. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I guess the, the approach that I take is a little different because most of my family is, is, is Christian. And obviously they're all, right. you know, very, you know, they, 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 they love war. Um, as, as, Which is as far absurd. As I can tell. Um, so, so, so I, I take it. I take it to like this. Okay, so, so you're a Christian. And you, you, you abide by the Ten Commandments, right? Well, what is one of them? Thou shalt not kill. Well, what's going on over there? Uh, you know, uh, you know what, what's going on over there? I mean, okay, sure, sure. For, count out, count out the the supposed opposing military. The yeah, the supposed opposing military. What about all of the innocents that are dead? Right. That's that's murder, right? That's murder, right? right? So uh, that's that's kind of the approach. And accusing their religion against them, but um, I mean, it's it's well, it's not even really that. It's trying trying to point out the, the contradiction in their mind. Um, right. So so I guess that's that's kind of the, the approach that I take when I do decide to have these conversations. I don't do it that much anymore because uh, I talked uh, Jason and I talked about this in one of the episodes a while back here on LUA. Um, but you know, most people uh, most people are content with being slaves. They they want to. You know, I guess get rid of that, uh, you know, personal responsibility, you know, just outsource that to, uh, you know, so-called political rulers. Right. Yeah. Um, it's it's it's, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about this because I question what it's worth. You know, like I question uh, I question what it's worth uh, talking about these things. I question what it's worth, what it's worth uh, pointing them out. Uh, and the reason why I do that is just because it's so much easier for me to say, uh, look around you, you know, in my town, um, there's a rich neighborhood, uh, like a multi-million dollar neighborhood that, uh, has cut deals with the city, uh, to have a pipeline installed, uh, a sewage pipeline installed from our city to this nice multi-million dollar neighborhood. Uh, which is a closed community, which you can't get into. And and then everybody who's closer has to have fucking septic tanks, right? Which is, you know, whatever. But the, the point is, as far as that's concerned, is like that's much easier for me to point out to a to somebody around me rather than saying, look what's happening across the pond. You know, you know what I mean? Like sort of like what, what you were saying. You know, this... 
thing that's happening, this uh, this subsidy of uh, of <laughs> of the basically the rich people uh, who run this town. Really, I mean, they really do. I'm not just saying. I'm not like trashing that they have wealth. I'm saying that they literally also run the town. You know. Yeah, they they, uh, they have a lot of money to to toss to you know to you know to to donate to politi- to local politicians and stuff. Right. So, yeah, it, they they get, they get the favors. Yeah. No, I I know what you mean. Yeah. I'm saying that that is more in their face <clears throat> than uh, something that's happening across the ocean. And yet, I still feel passionate about what's happening across the ocean because it's a bl- glaring fucking example of uh, of what the state does to people, you know. And, you know, it's something that could happen to them at any given moment. The U.S. government has attacked people on their home on, – on the U.S. soil all the time. I mean, it happens constantly and uh, throughout history. Whiskey Rebellion, you know, just right mm-hmm. after the U.S. was a thing. Yeah, the the state went after a bunch of veterans. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and and see, I, I guess I don't know, man. Like I I, I kind of you know I, I I kind of you know when I'm walking through a line of thought, I think you know okay, okay well maybe you know if we if we if we show them this violence, you know maybe maybe that'll maybe maybe that will help. But they see the violence of the bludgies every single day. They see right. just the 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 outright murder. And that there's always justifications for it. It's uh, oh well, you know, uh, not all bludgies are bad. Bullshit. Um, their their main task is to violate person and property. But um, so they'll justify it in some way. You know, whether it's uh, well, you know, he should have just listened, or he should have just uh, oh, you know obeyed. God. Oh, he should have just obeyed the orders. Um, so th- there's always this 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 ex post facto justification for you know why these actions were 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 okay and, and were moral, right? Um, so I think when it comes to war, uh, you know, like with with the casualty, like with the with the millions upon millions of innocents that have been that have been murdered, uh, there's still justification for that too. It's uh, you know it's it's just unfortunate. Yeah, we didn't want it to happen, but you know that's the cost of war, and it's it's like I I I, I don't know the the amount of the amount of Hoops. I guess the the amount of logical fallacies, you know, people have to, that these statists have to jump through in their minds is is honestly, it's I I, I don't I can't understand it anymore. Because I, I I was never in that position. I mean, I I I was you know, 18, 19 years old, and I was a constitutionalist. I went straight, you know, straight <laughs> to that. I was straight to anti-political. So I I've never I've never been in that position where I have the just endless contradictions in my mind. Maybe when I was a sovereign citizen for six months, but um, that was a <laughs> very very small portion. But I, I'm I don't so know. Glad I, I, I can't I, understand it. I'm so glad that when you were a sovereign citizen, you didn't decide to commit suicide by cop. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it yeah. seems like that's what their favorite thing to fucking do is nowadays. Uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, you're, you're, me- you're mentioning the, uh, you know, the, I guess the, the, the rich people in your town getting that sewage or whatever. It reminds me of, uh, you know, the making deals. Uh, ben Stone tweeted out uh, a couple days ago uh, how to build a road. One, rob a bunch of oh. people. Two, cut a deal with your cousin's construction company. Three, cut a deal with a mob-connected union boss. Four, cut a deal with local land developers. Five, pocket tons of cash. Six, secure re-election. Seven, build the road. And that's so <laughs> fantastic. And it's, well, without government, who will build the roads? Well, you know, let's see here. Um, hire a construction company. Build the road. Cut out <laughs> five steps. But, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I want to toss that up there because I found that absolutely hilarious. The only problem with that, I saw that too, by the way. But the only problem with that is that I think I think maybe he missed just a few steps before build the road. And actually, I think he also may have uh, he he's using a general example because the road doesn't always get built. <laughs> true, true. Secure re-election. Um, road construction continues for five more years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like locally, um, my God. Oklahoma roads are so fucking terrible. They are so fucking terrible. And the way they build them, I swear to God, they build them so that the next, when they're done, they have another road to build. And then when they're done, they have to come back and repair the original road that they were working. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, I s- so the, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of those folks are union and they don't want to be laid off. Yeah. So, so they, they intentionally delay on jobs and ensure that they, you know, ensure that they have work. But yeah, similar situation here in the communist state of Illinois. Uh, obviously... Uh, I think the well for Chicago specifically, I'm not sure about. So, well, Springfield at one time had to you know turn off the electricity for for you know a certain amount of time so that they could you know save money because they were that they were that broken they couldn't pay their bills. Um, but yeah, apparently like a, like this year I think it was they had to, they had to finish construction by you know some date and then they were they you know they were done there was no more money going to it because they're just they're just flat out broke. 
Uh, so, so yeah, so similar, similar situation here. And I'm, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm happy with it because everywhere I went, there was always like, I, I go like two different places and there's always road construction for like the last 10 years on these same damn roads. So, you know, I'm happy, you know, I can finally go that like, I, it's not, you know, like a couple miles of 65 down to, you know, uh, 10 miles of 45 and then five miles later back down to four. Like it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and the, and the fact that statists think that this is the best way, you know, to, to, to get this done is uh it's it's it's, it's, it's funny it's funny it's it's absolutely absurd dude but uh yeah you know back to the back to the anti-war thing i just i i do think that it's worth just mentioning that today is armistice day it was supposed to be the war to end all wars and it, and i don't know who in their right mind thought that that was gonna fucking happen you know but it's worth but I think it's worth mentioning. You know, I think I absolutely think that it's worth mentioning that they couldn't even tell you the truth as far as this goes. You know what I mean? Like, right. they couldn't even say this amount of bloodshed is, is wrong. It should never happen again. A couple years later, you know, just a few years later, more war. <laughs> you know, like, right. it's never, ever, ever going to change. And, and, and really, uh, if you want to talk fucking deep state, one of the one things that we actually have evidence of is that, like, getting into Vietnam based on a lie. Willing to send people to fucking die and to kill c civilians based on a goddamn lie. And almost every war since then based on a fucking lie. You yeah, know what I mean? False flag after false flag not to, to get knowing, into the war, yeah. Yeah, not knowing the full picture. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, I, I don't know what value it's going to have for more freedom for me to talk about being anti-war, but um, it's, I think that it is worth it to talk about this stuff because people are fucking dying. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even, even if Daily. it doesn't, even if it doesn't, it, it's, it's, it's a little therapeutic too, to just go off yeah. on, on, on rants about it. But um, I, I guess... It's also, I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of a disservice. I mean, I, I obviously, we, like, I, I don't claim responsibility. And unfortunately, some of my tax dollars have, have gone to fund that. But I don't claim personal, I don't claim responsibility myself. But I, I still feel like it would be doing kind of a disservice to at least not try to stand up for, I guess, the, you know, the, I guess, the, the, the natural rights. I'll just use that term for now. The natural rights of those individuals who were just outright murdered. Um, so I, right. I th it's, it's not an obligation. Sure, it's, a, it's not. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I think it's still... Still worth talking about. Maybe, maybe yeah. you know, maybe just to maybe maybe just as you know, I don't know, I don't know. But but you mentioned uh, Armistice Day. Um, one, I um, have you ever heard of the concept of Freedom Holidays? Uh, uh no, no. So it's uh, something that I think it was started by Cal Molinay from Liberate RVA, and it's uh, uh, reappropriating government mythology to I guess be more of a freedom perspective. So uh, the Freedom Holiday for today is Non Aggression Day. Non Aggression um, Day. Yep, Non Aggression. Right. It, it fits. It fits. Uh, yeah, but yeah, does. there's 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 ones for for every major, uh, you know, every I guess major government holiday. Um, so I, I mean, maybe maybe the takeaway here for at least for this portion of the discussion is, <clears throat> you know, as I said, you know, I, I think it is important to talk about it uh, for the reasons that I said. Um, but even I, I think maybe even better, uh, you know, maybe something not something in the negative. Well, I guess I guess not actually not something I guess negative. Um, as far as, you know, kind of depressing, well, why not something positive, you know, non-aggression day, um, you know, just think about all of, all of the, the great, the great things that come about with, you know, non-aggression and voluntary interaction. Right. Yeah. I agree with that, man. I, as far, as far as, um, uh, what I just previously said though, about talking about the wars, you know, being anti-war, uh, there's a lot of fucking war drums going on right now, uh, Oh yeah, and yeah. they're beating them hard for a couple of different places, and uh, and you know when you start seeing the fucking um, they start trotting out uh, you know victims of regimes, which I'm not I'm not saying that there there's not okay like let's think about North Korea or something like that. Clearly that government million is a, millions of victims. Yeah, yeah, clearly that government is oppressing its fucking people. Okay, clearly, but. The solution can't be a solution 
where fucking all the people that oh, you're trying oh, you're to... starving well let me kill you yeah <laughs> or well even even sanctions i mean like i don't even yeah sa sanctions to a communist or socialist you know country that's that that is i mean that you, you can basically you know you might as well just put a bullet through the yeah, that's what I'm, that's what i'm saying it's like even say like they're like uh, I literally just saw Donald Trump talking about how we need to impose these greater sanctions on North Korea to help their people. What? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're going to kill them. They're already starving. They already have fucking bread lines, you know? I don't know. It's mm -hmm. – anyways, <laughs> maybe we should move on from the anti-war discussion, but I just – it's just something uh, that that I think is important even though – you know, I, I kind of come full circle here, even though I don't know what value it has as far as attaining freedom. I still think it's important to point it out. Right, right. And, and, and I think whether it's war or any other subject, uh, I, I, and I've been this has been kind of my focus of research for the past few months. I've been digging through Peace Revolution Radio, uh, 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 Richard Grove's podcast that he started in like 2008. And uh, uh, I, I've, I've been kind of going back to, uh, to, to I guess, the roots. And, and, and I tend to agree with, with him and, uh, you know, James Corbett that the, the, with, with any subject you cover, uh, it's the, the complete abandonment of the trivia method. Um, you know, so, so the, you know, kind of the war rhetoric, they kind of just jump straight to the rhetoric without having the grammar or the knowledge, obtaining all the information available, or at least as much as possible, then form, and then, you know, uh, uh, knowledge, understanding, kind of combining those to come up with, come up to come up with conclusions, and then the rhetoric, you know, um, I guess the, 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 I guess the, the wisdom that comes out of that. Um, so it, it's the, uh, if, if they're getting all of their news from, you know, government-controlled media like Communist News Network and, and Faux News, and they don't have the full picture of a story uh, or of uh, the topic that they're that they're you know that they're that they're focusing on, um, they're, they're they're lost. I mean, there's there's no way they can they can come to you know uh, I guess to come to I guess purposeful decisions right. uh, or or, or the, the I guess the, the right action to to fit the scenario. Um, so I, and, and this is gonna be something that I cover more. I've been really, really deeply, um, you know, researching this in, in my little, little spare time. Um, we're going to get back to, um, some philosophy on LUA and, you know, I, I, and, and I think I made a mistake with the direct action series. I think I should have done this first. Uh, but you know, hindsight is always 2020 because I like building up the need for direct action with, 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 with I guess this, this sort of story that I'm going to be telling. Well, you Retelling it, retelling in my own. But way. you can, but you, you can still re-release. You, you know what I mean? Like you could still do, you could still do the right order. You know that, right? Like you don't have to just like. Even though you're doing it backwards, you can still like release it. You know, boom, boom again, right? You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't matter. Sure, sure, we yeah. live it. We're in a digital age right now, Shane. Like we can literally just re-release shit in the right order and say this is the way it's supposed to be you know yeah 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 that's that, that's that, that's true that's true but but i guess the, the i guess the, the main point here and then we can we can move on but uh you know i really i really guys i mean I, i'd recommend peace revolution you know the podcast peace revolution uh and just start at episode one and uh, for me since i've been you know looking into this stuff for for three or four years um, and it does get into, I guess, some conspiratorial stuff, but it's it's approached with you know through the trivia method. So Richard Grove is honestly fantastic. I'm, I'm gonna have him on the show here uh, soon. He's finishing up a project, then I'll get him on. Uh, but God, it, it's it's time to get back to basics. It really is. Uh, and I know a lot of folks in the anarchist community, or at least a number of them, are familiar with the trivia method and they they kind of use it. But I think. I, I don't know. I, I think it's time to get back yep. to basics, at least at least for me, which is which is what I've been doing. But uh, but all right. Uh, I guess uh, uh, any any other thoughts on that or uh, what, what's the, the next subject of discussion uh, that you had? Oh, man. Um, so I don't even know if you really want to talk about this. I didn't tell you this in the pregame, uh, but uh, <laughs> so, you know, earlier um, – I don't remember if it was on the podcast or if I said it beforehand, uh, but – oh, no, no. It was on the podcast. I was saying that um, we've sort of adopted our – it used to be uh, uh, lambasting politicians, public figures, policy, and print all from a libertarian pers – or liberty perspective, and we changed it to freedom. Uh, another reason that we did that 
is because I found I've sort of started to realize that I thought that the fucking uh, the anti-libertarian libertarian party, as you like to call it, uh, was uh, yep. was bad. But there's a whole nother thing <laughs> happening with people who call themselves libertarians now, which I'm, I'm not going to get into to, uh, to saying that they're not libertarian. I'm just going to get into the fact that uh, that uh, I don't agree with with them. OK, uh, well, yeah, they, they can see it's, it's, it's just verbicide uh, verbicide as far as as far as I as far as I see it. Um, they can have they can have that goddamn word, you know. They can take libertarian. I'll stick with, uh, yeah. with with anarchist or Vanuan or something like that. I don't I don't need that shitty yeah. label with all of the all of the the, the baggage that comes along yeah, with it. Yeah, that's a, that's what I was gonna say. That's why I'm not I'm not saying you're not a libertarian or or whatever. I'm just I've moved away from that. I've just sort of backed off, and uh, and I don't need to be associated with any party politics. I don't need to be associated with any of this weird fucking philosophy shit that you got going on. But um, so I've noticed two things. Um, number one, there are uh, full fucking fledged uh, communists uh, in uh, in Liberty right now. And when I say communists, I mean full fucking fledged communists who say that they're libertarians, right? Uh, people who are saying shit like uh, there is no private property. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't want you to have your property. If you own a yacht, I can take that yacht because you're not using it type shit, right? Uh, so they're more of the, the left libertarian syndicalist right. variety. Uh, well, I see, I know an anarcho syndicalist, right? And he, you, uh, I think we've had a sort of a conversation about him before. He sort of came around to mutualism right, right, yeah. a little bit in that, uh, that, I can have mine, you know what I mean? <laughs> sort of situation like he's willing to let me live the way that I want to live in sort of a community that I want to live, or at least he says that, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> it, it, it worries me just a little bit, but I'm going to let it go because we we're not there. So it's fine. Uh, so there's literally full on communists calling themselves libertarians and there's also straight up fascists which i mean there's sort of just two sides of the oh, same yeah. coin but i've well yeah so 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 what you're explaining then so you have the normal left right paradigm that you know i guess libertarians and anarchists are trying to get out of but in essence what has happened is there's the same the same false dichotomy of left versus right yes. in libertarianism. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's literally it's out in the open that a, a new system was created. Right. right, it's out in the open for everybody to see. Uh, it's fucking disgusting to look at. Uh, ma mainly because I get so tired of hearing people uh, go on these fucking edgy rants uh, about essentially. They try to throw in your face their stupid fucking horseshit preference that has nothing to do with your freedom whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like, one of the biggest ones lately, and I hate to take us down this road, and if you don't want to go down this road, you can just edit this out, okay? But, I ain't okay. scared. Let's do so, it. So, one, one of the biggest fucking thing that's been happening lately is this whole border tarrying uh, horseshit, right? You knew I was going to go there, I bet. Well, it's either that or secession. Well, yeah, both of my pet yeah. peeves, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's that, that's fine. Yeah, let's 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 do it. Let's do it. We haven't really talked about it on this podcast. Okay, yet, so, so, okay. so I've seen some people that I have respected in the past uh, who call themselves anarchists or who, who have been anarcho-capitalists or whatever, and they jump right down the throat of this whole border thing, and I I sort of think that it may have started with Stefan Molyneux, um, but people say that it started before that. Um, not to like name drop or anything, but I do know that Stefan Molyneux has sort of led the charge as far as this is concerned, making libertarians uh, uh, bordertarians uh, again, or or if they were ever. <laughs> and uh, so the idea is 
they push this idea that, well, immigrants who come in, uh, if they cross that uh, border, that means that they're going to be getting welfare, and that means that the state is going to increase taxation. So you will be coerced twice as much because there are more immigrants here, right? So the solution to that is to build a multi-billion dollar wall, maybe trillion dollar wall, with stolen funds, coerced funds, if you will, uh, and to then pay for border guards, which are cops, to operate within 100 miles of the border, stopping people willy-nilly as they see fit, it, to pay for those cops, right? So you're trading one police state for another, even though nothing ever fucking changed, because guess what? Uh, those already exist with an open border situation, you know what I mean? And they would exist with a closed border situation because the government... Okay, I'm starting, I'm starting to snowball into like, uh, like crazy uncle rant, uh, whereas I was trying to talk about the ph philosophy <laughs> of it. But essentially, it makes no fucking sense to me, okay? It makes no sense. And, I, you know, then race is coming into it. Ethno-nationalism is coming into it. People are starting to say that a nation is not a government. So it's not the state. A nation is not the state. Uh, and, you know, p there are... Uh, man, it's fucking... It is... It, yeah. it, I literally, I have a headache just talking about it. I don't think it's my hangover from last night. I think I literally have a headache talking about uh, about this topic but it's so fucking annoying literally i just unfollow people on facebook because i can't fucking stand oh, yeah. looking at these arguments because they have nothing to do with freedom in my opinion nothing it's a fucking preference dude no and a bad one right right and, and you and, and you mentioned i mean so 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 the the, the fear is that uh you know uh, you know these these uh, these uh, illegal, these so-called illegal immigrants will come in and you know get on welfare. It'll cost it'll cost uh, you know the the American taxpayer more. Uh, but yeah, on, on the other hand, you know to it, it, it would cost it, it costs a lot to, to fund border security, uh, and you know to build that wall it costs a lot of money. So either way, you know the the you know the taxes are going to go. You know the the amount of you know theft that occurs is is, is going to have to increase. Uh, oh, it would have anyways. I mean you know what they how often do they actually lower taxes? I don't. No, they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't. So, so, so the tax are going to increase for, for uh, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, this is you know just kind of giving the state, an ex uh, you know, reason to, yeah. uh, to, to you know, in increase the theft. <sighs> but yeah, I, I and I, I've said this before, but I, I don't know the 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 border thing is just it's it's so yeah. useless to me. They're both they're both uh, you know hypothetical. I, I guess they're both. Uh, I guess they're both just philosophical. It's just philosophical masturbation. It doesn't matter. Um, so the 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 open the open borders the the governments. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. They're they're both they're they're both kind of philosophical. They're both not practical. You have no control over, uh, you know, what the state decides to do. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just a, a tool of uh, tool of division. And hell, you know, man, uh, conspiratorial here. My I guess my conspiracy theory of the day. You know, maybe there were some state infiltrators to, uh, you know, uh, I guess. Uh, because uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, the back when, like, back in 2015 and 2016, whenever I was, you know, first, like, introduced to the anarchist circle, it was pretty yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty great. So, I think there are some infiltrators, man. Not really, but... No, yeah, let's go ahead and spread that rumor. Uh, there's infiltrators into uh, Liberty, and uh, they're all either communists or fascists. And let's just say communists, because it's a good circle term for this circle jerk that they got going on anyways but um w what i was going to say to you just now is you said you have no control over what um what the state decides to do right open borders or closed borders doesn't fucking matter they're going to do whatever the fuck they want to do right if there's fucking public property there along that goddamn border and you're an immigrant you're somebody from Me let's just say somebody from mexico right I don't think that you have any moral goddamn obligation to fucking follow the law. I don't think that here, now, <laughs> with you in Illinois or me here in Oklahoma. You know what I mean? I, why? So why would I apply some sort of arbitrary, like, no, you have to follow the law because you're not from here. 
if I don't think that anybody should have to follow the law here. You know what I mean? Like, like there's. Right, right. It's it's so it's so it's the, so it's so, so it's the these anarchists who you know taxation is theft. You know we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Um, but God damn it, if an illegal immigrant comes across, they need to nationalize right. so they can pay taxes. It's like Jesus, man. Like that was. Yeah. That's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> How do you end up there from taxation is theft, huh? Okay, well, okay. And, and another thing, too, is that, um, you know, I've sort of followed this line of thinking with uh, cops uh, recently. This is, like, my favorite thing to do is, like, when people say they should have just obeyed the law, obeyed the law, obeyed the law. My favorite thing to do is point out uh, there was that book, Three Felonies a Day. I don't know if you've ever read that book or whatever or even heard. I haven't read yeah. it, but I know about it. Yeah, so I know the, about it. Though. The premise is that there's 20,000 laws that apply to gun owners alone. Okay, and that's a fucking basically rough estimate. If you ask any legal es expert how many laws there are th there are that apply to citizens of this country that were literally made to for you to follow, the number is unknown. You know what that means? That means you can't follow the fucking law. That means you can't. It's impossible. It is impossible yeah. for you to follow the law. So whenever people say, obey the law, I say, well, y you don't obey the law. You can't You can't because you don't even know what it is. And ignorance of the law doesn't mean that you're innocent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Ignorant to your, and ignorant to your jurist on excuse on. Um, but yeah, and, and also, too, you look at so all of the status, who, like the ones, well, you know, he should have just followed the law, you know, like in a confrontation with a bludgy. Title four flag code there, guys. You know, you're, uh, you're 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 facing 30 days in jail or 100 150 dollar fine, I think it is, every time you, uh, you know, it, you know, wear a American flag apparel right. or uh, you you know drape a flag American over flag something. American flag napkins. Uh, oh yeah, you're to you're, wipe your butt. Yep, yep, you, yep, you are. Uh, yeah, you're you're viol you're violating the law. I guess the, uh, I guess the good. I guess well, no, it's not good because it's selective right. enforcement. Uh, they they decide not to enforce Title IV. Um, so that automatically just tells you right there the law is a racket. Either it applies to everybody right. or it applies to no one. Uh, the the so, point that I the point that I'm making so yeah. as far as that's concerned is that um, an anarchist would should look at that and say, well, that's why I don't really give a fuck about the law. Just sort of do what I want to do, which is what anarchy is, right? I mean, it's that's sort of what it is. You're saying that I'm going to live my life the way that I see fit. Uh, you know, uh, that's what I do in my house. Everybody fucking does in their house. You know what I mean? When you get to your the place where you live. Do you are you thinking about what are the cop? Uh, uh, I need to make sure I don't break this law. I need to make sure I don't share my Netflix password because that could be a felony now. By the way, um, you know, like, are you really thinking about all that? No, you don't give a fuck about all that. You're not thinking about the law when you're in your house. No. And uh, so the point is, is if you if you're an anarchist and you're saying no rulers, if you're calling yourself an anarchist, you're saying no rulers. You know, you're 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 saying I want to live a voluntary lifestyle. I believe in the non-aggression principle. Whatever, any of that stuff, whatever. And then you're also saying, uh, well, I don't think that those Mexicans should cross that border, uh, that public property border, that yeah. state border. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't understand where you get off as far as what laws matter and what laws don't, because, you know what I mean? If you're if you're it's it seems intellectually dishonest to say that these laws matter, these border laws matter, but these laws that I'm breaking constantly don't. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I definitely do. I definitely do. And I had a comment, but it escaped me. Yeah, I saw it leave moment. your brain. I literally watched it leave. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was gone. It was gone. One second it was you there. You got a glazed look, and you instantly <laughs> went to a, like a One special second. ed class, and I was like. Get back in there. But. I went yeah. back to government schools yeah. for, a minute, yeah. for, a, for a second. That's and what I, I meant by memory. special ed. Um, I meant public school. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating as well, too. Oh, that's, that's what it was. So, so, so obviously there, there are those pragmatic, pra pragmatic, so-called pragmatic folks, even though it's not pragmatic, uh, you know, pursuing lifestyle changes that actually increase your freedom. That's pragmatism, but, uh, that's, that's pragmatism and, you know, reality too. But, um, so there's that kind of, that's, that, that so-called, you know, well, pragmatic approach of, well, working, working inside the system, uh, we're, you know, working inside the system. But I think, you know, my, my perspective is, has been for at least the past year and a half is, you know, well, just withdrawing from that system, kind of the, the Venuan approach where, uh, you know, more than happy to coexist with the state, uh, you know, in a protracted conflict. Um, 
not more than happy, but you know, content with it. Like, we're, like uh, you know, Vanuans don't try to, uh, you know, don't pursue measures to abolish the state. It's 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 going to as long as there's a state of servile society, there's going to be a state, and that's kind of how it's been forever, right? So uh, I think it's uh, extremely naive to think that you know, well, well, now guys, now we can do this. We can we can use we can use the government. Uh, to to actually achieve an anarchist society, this is the one time we can do it. Never worked in the never worked in the history of humanity, but god damn it, it's gonna work now. It's gonna <laughs> work. Um, so I don't know. I, I I really think the the goal the goal you know should be, or I guess the if I don't like putting should because that kind of I guess my 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 outlook my perspective is uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're breaking up pretty okay. bad. Okay, it says. Says an internet connection problem, so I'll just kind of, you know, pause here for okay. a moment. What the hell? Okay. <clears throat> Bear with us, folks. Want to make sure coming through okay? I can hear you, but it's like it's really uh, choppy and and your choppy. Gra uh, your your video is okay. Maybe be maybe better now. It you sound better, but you don't look better. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine as long as as long as you yeah. can hear me. But yeah, I, I, I guess my I guess my my, my preference and what I th is is you know most for for individuals because that's what you know anarchy is about, right? It's about it's about the individual as long as it's not the collectivist kind of anarchism, which which a uh, whole other whole other discussion. But you know it's it's about the individual. So I think you know pursuing individual freedom should be you know I guess uh, a lot more yeah. important than trying to I guess convince others uh, you know to adopt to convince you know a critical mass to adopt. Uh, you know the the same kind of philosoph philosophical positions that we right. have. Uh, I think that's uh, really naive, and, and as Rayo said, it's kind of authoritarian, right? Uh, it, it, it kind of is. You know, trying to even if it's co convincing voluntarily, trying to convince you know an entire population to agree with you. Uh, well, what about individuality, right? Um, so I don't know. No, I think you're right. I think you convinced me on that, and I think that might come up on the Liberty Lampoon episode that I'm going to record pretty soon. There today. you go. There you go. Right on. So, right on. So, um, I guess uh, uh, it's it's been about an hour. We can go ahead and wrap up. And I've got to do some, <laughs> I've got to do some prep before I enter, before I record another uh, before I record another episode of LUA with Jason here uh, in about uh, three and a half hours. So I guess we we can we can kind of start to wrap up cool. here. Um, but uh, I guess with, with what we've discussed today, I mean, what, what are your what are your what are your closing thoughts for the listeners? I think that uh, I think that obviously the the main topic that has sort of coursed through this is that I wonder about the uh, value of the certain certain discussions, and I certainly, as far as like uh, my closing thought, uh, every every it seems like every time I listen to your show and every time I talk to you, I realize that uh, you're right about one thing for sure. And that is that uh, securing my personal freedom is more important than me trying to convince others to uh, to sort of let me be free. You know what I mean? Right. I should go and take it on my own. Direct action, if you will, which I wore last night. I, w I wish I would have thought about like maybe wearing that today so I could be like, I, I, you know, I got it on. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so th that's my closing thought for sure is that, uh, you know, uh, that's the direction that we should all be moving in and you know you sort of can't stop the fucking haters you know what i mean right like right. uh you, you just can't and um e even as far as like these anti-libertarian libertarians going i'm just gonna call that's what i'm gonna call bordertarians or the communist libertarians or whatever anti-libertarian libertarians i'm yep. just gonna keep that and uh i think you just kind of gotta live and let live i mean and do your own thing Right, right. Yeah, I'm right. Th I'm right there with you on the, you know, the value of discussing, you know, those things or or holding those positions. But, um, you know, I'm I'm kind of more skeptical about uh, the, the ed educational efforts, like you know, p purely educational efforts to begin with. I mean, that I, I don't I don't really, uh, I don't think the efficacy of that. I think the eff efficacy of that has borne out at least some evidence to show that, uh, you know, education isn't, uh, isn't. Uh, all that effective if it, if, if it is uh, even in uh, even in uh, i guess a, a very minimal amount but um comedy is though yes, yes. comedy comedy is Col yeah cul culture that... jamming definitely is it's uh it's yeah. it's uh, kind of infiltrating the subconscious yeah so that's what i'm going to keep doing <laughs> right on right on and uh so yeah you can find aaron's podcast at libertylampoon.com go check it out go check it out you guys do video over there too right uh yeah we have been i do want to mention though Today, well, I don't know when this will come out, but uh, if you're listening to this, you should go to libertylampoon.com slash drones, 
we got like sort of an audio drama comedy going on over there following a couple of drone operators and the story is going in a freedom perspective eventually <laughs> at this point it's just showing how fucked up these dudes are so you should check that out too you can subscribe on stitchers and i or well not itunes actually it will be itunes soon okay but. cool yeah yeah and I, I listened to the first episode of that and uh, you know as with uh, you know uh, I'm always impressed by by the production quality of, of your guys' work, and uh, you know it's great stuff. Great stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, not a problem. We'll definitely check that out. Cool, cool. So yeah, LibertyLampoon.com. Go check out their podcast, and uh, you know I'll just kind of uh, you know leave it with this. I do. I still do have some direct action over political crusading shirts. The one I'm wearing right now for those on the podcast feed. We're doing video for this one because I didn't have an outline. We just kind of uh, went off the cuff for this one. Uh, but yeah, fifteen dollars and free shipping. And I'll send you some other goodies as well, libertyunderattack.com forward slash shirts. You know, go we'll, we'll wear it to your uh, next local uh, libertarian, anti-libertarian libertarian party. No, don't do that. Uh, well, if, if you're going to go, you might as well do it. But uh, I, I don't know. That seems a little contradictory to me. But uh, but regardless, regardless, thanks so much for uh, for, for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Aaron, for uh, spending some time with me. It was good to, uh, good to chat again. Yeah, man. All right. All right. Later, guys.